What's up YouTube? Danny Ipe here with another Dragon Ball Super TCG video. Uh, today I have a recording of one of my matches that I played at a tournament with my Golden Frieza deck, which I have posted on my channel if you guys want to check it out. Um, it was versus a Beerus. Now people say Beerus counters uh, Frieza. It's definitely not the case. But that's not why I want to show you guys this video. Um, the reason I wanted to sh you guys to see this match, this specific match, was because I want you guys to know the importance of results of training. I honestly believe that results of training is probably the most key card in the set right now. And if you're not running results of training, you're probably going to have a bad time. Um, this is one of the examples of why you should run results of training. Uh, if you guys want to see more videos like this, hit me up in the comment section below. And yeah, check it out. So right now we're going to start off with the mulligan. Uh, so normally when I mulligan I really just kind of look for Avenging Frieza, the one drop, and an objection. Uh, I'm not too worried if I don't get objection, Avenging Frieza is nice, but for the most part mulliganing uh, just any kind of one drop, Avenging Frieza is the best one drop to, to mulligan for. Uh, in this scenario here I got uh, Avenging Frieza and results of training which I don't keep all the time, I only kept in this situation because his deck, well he's Beerus and I felt like it was a, a more stally deck so I wanted to get my result of training soon. I, I, I just didn't want to not have it when I was able to play it. Uh, so I just kept it. But in certain matchups you don't need to keep it, you can toss it away. And as you can see I got lucky and I pulled the objection there. Uh, which I'm still on the fence about whether I need the mana ramp or not. I know people either like or dislike objection. Uh, I'm for one, I kind of, I'm more for it. Uh, I do like the card if you have enough cards to sustain the the ramp obviously because it does neg you one card so sometimes it's not the greatest and the reason I choose it over uh, like the Weiss and Bulma is because Weiss and Bulma take up seven eight slots whereas objection takes up four so yeah that's how we start the mulligan so it looks like here I just played Avenging Frieza top three cards which I really like about Avenging Frieza is you can pull the 10k combo cards which you actually can't do with any other color uh, she's the only one that can pull, or Yellow's the only one that can pull their 10k, uh, 10k combo card. And right now I'm just flipping my cards over just because I noticed that they were, uh, for some reason, I don't know how I shuffled, I must have shuffled a little weird or something, but they were upside down, and, uh, I'm pretty OCD about that. So yeah, I did that, shuffle it, and, yep, yeah, got my card, and then, uh, so the reason I didn't sack, so, so, for the most part you can sack your Frieza, to untap a mana, draw a card. I didn't do it there because on turn one I can't really feel like he's. There's not too many things he could do to kill it. I didn't really need the the energy untapped or anything. Um, so I figured I'd, I'd just save it. But for the most part, you can, you can. It's not a big deal. There's not much he could do on turn one to really hurt me. Uh, so yeah, that's why I'm not really too scared of it. He swings and passes turn. I draw a card and we start our next turn. So you're about to see me make a misplay actually. I, I remember this because I remember thinking, damn, why did I just make that misplay? So right now I'm about to play my objection. So sometimes it's hard to decide what to use with objection. The way I always decide is cards I won't be able to use for a while. And in this case, it is the, I, I probably could have chosen my Mecha Frieza, but I figured I wouldn't need it anyways um, because of the way I'm about to play this game. So I just threw my 10K combo card down there this is my misplay right here. I played my Sobear when I didn't need to. So sometimes I play Sobear because I don't want to have to play it next turn because I'm gonna sack I'm gonna sack him eventually. I'm gonna I'll probably sack him next turn. But in this scenario, I'm against Beers and I should have seen this coming, which is him playing objection turn two, making it turn three, and him being able to swing and kill my Sobear. And I, I yeah, so that's a little misplay. So that like knowing a bunch of so knowing how your opponent's deck will work. Obviously, I knew how it could work, I just completely forgot about it, and uh, yeah, I could have avoided that situation and still had a Sobear in my hand, but yeah, so mistakes were made. Uh, and in the beginning, I never block, or I take all the damage I can, because in this game, taking damage is actually beneficial to you, at least early game, you get cards you want, 
or it helps you uh, dig for cards faster. Obviously, you don't want to take damage later on, but the first four damage is kind of like, all right, hit me up, I'll take it. But as you can see for me, I actually haven't decided to attack him once. So he still has all eight of his health and or life, and his hand is slowly getting depleted, which is how my deck is going to basically win me the game. Again, I play another Avenging Frieza. And honestly, not whiffing on Avenging Frieza is quite nice because the plusing is crazy. So as you can see there, I'm not going to sack the Frieza. So not only does Frieza pull me a card, I sacked it, untap my mana, and I got a second card. So yeah, Avenging Frieza is so good when you plus. And again, I'd elect not to attack my opponent. He draws a card. I think he's up to four or five now. Where if I attacked him, he'd be at six. If I attacked him even more from before, he'd have like seven, eight cards in his hand right now. Which is not what we want. We want your cards to. We want your opponent to have a limited amount of cards. So there's no point of attacking right now. Uh, obviously, some matchups are different, but this specific one is how I wanted to show you guys why result of training is so important. Because honestly, I, you can't. I honestly, you can't win without it. It feels like in in certain matchups, obviously. Um, when you're playing mono red, sometimes you feel safe because you have a Kaba, so you can force awaken. When you're at five, or you have Fierce Yell Vegeta when you're green, you can Force Awaken when you're at five. But what happens when your opponent keeps you at eight? You're gonna have to hold four Kabas in your hand, four Fierce Yell Vegetas. Uh, that is not a that's not a way to, to to go about that. So when you keep your opponent at eight, there isn't really anything he can do unless he's playing Result of Training, which honestly I think is one of the most key cards in the game right now. He likes to swing again. I mull it over for a little bit, and I'm pretty sure I elect to just take the damage. And there we go. See, so he's currently keeps me at he currently has me at five, which maybe I assume he probably locked me at. But now because of results of training, boom! And watch this interaction I'm about to do, which with this card and freeze in particular, it is so broken. I love it. So he's reading it right now, so you can obviously because he uh, to make sure it does what I said I said it does which is perfectly fine so I uh, play the card here's the key part I can awaken during my turn I don't have to awaken right when I activate it so during my turn I can awaken right I untap my four mana as energy sorry as you saw me do now I'm gonna sack my Galdo untap one of the energy draw a card right now I'm gonna awaken draw two more cards Luckily I pull an Avenging Frieza here, play my Avenging Frieza, and then sack it again, untapping two, drawing another card. Pretty sure I whiff on this one, but see what I just did there? I just drew insane amount of cards, and that's a big thing. When you result of training, you don't have to waken right away. I was able to pull off this front side combo, then I turned, up, turned him around, flipped him, pulled this back side combo, and now every time I swing, I draw a card. Right now I, I swung at his Goku because I was able to tap it with Goldo, but now my advantage is immense right now. So he's not getting any cards, and now every time I attack, I'm getting cards. Now to counteract that, he should never have something tapped for me to attack, because if I ever attack his Beerus, he'll get a card, I get a card. Which in this scenario is actually okay, because at least I'm plusing, whereas before if I attacked him with my leader, he'd get a card and I'd get nothing for it. But now if I want to attack his leader, at least I'll get a card for it, and the advantage it nullifies his advantage for taking the damage for one thing and it uh yeah helps me speed through my deck so right now he plays this this is kind of a whatever play i do it sometimes because i i don't want them to ramp so i call ball which negates his uh act basically his auto when he comes into to play there um to, so it negates his ability and did I need to do it? I didn't need to do it, but I don't know. I figured let's just stop his uh, stop his ramp. But there's a, there isn't really anything he could ramp to to scare me. I did have another cold blood that's in my hand, so I figured eh, I'll just use it. But you don't need to use it. It's not really a big deal. I kind of just did it to see how it would pan out. So he doesn't get his uh, extra energy, and I'm pretty sure he likes to pass here. As you can see, I'm not playing anything for his beers to hurt me. Um, uh, to kill there's no point of any of that I made that mistake earlier and I learned from it that's another big thing learning from your mistakes early I learned obviously to not play things against his beers low drops so we're now electing 
think of an energy to play. So as you can see here, I have King Cold in this deck. Uh, I was playing at this tournament, whereas in my deck profile, I actually didn't have him in there. Um, he has a he, he's a real honestly King Cold's a really good card. It's just that three energy cost sometimes is pretty steep to play in certain situations right now. So normally you can play him when your opponent attacks and you can get it off uh, during their turn. It has revenge, it kills the person that attacks it, and you can tap somebody. The only reason I elected to do it now is because right now I have him right where I want him and I'm just trying to mill through my deck. So, and I don't want to give him any more cards, but I need something to attack, right? So I just played him just so I can exhaust his Whis and attack it with my Frieza, which I actually forgot to untap during my untap phase. But I swing with Frieza to draw the card because right now I'm trying to find my seven drop beers. Obviously to no avail. I run three of them. Uh, so you think I would hopefully run into it sooner than later, but for now I don't. So now we kind of just sit back and do nothing. Uh, it dies. I believe I pass my turn here. You always, this is another key thing, never untap, no, I'm sorry, never fully t tap your energy. If you ever go to zero energy, you're probably in bad shape. You always leave one or two something up. Right now, as you can see here, I believe I left one of my blue up and one of my yellow up, mainly for Crusher Ball, Cold Bloodlust. I should have probably left two yellow up. I can't tell what's in my hand right now, but it, I don't think I needed that blue. But for the most part, there's not. I doubt I'll need Cold Bloodlust or Crusher Ball, but I need at least one energy for one of them. So right now, see as you can see, he still has eight life. But now he has th what, three cards, and now he's debating whether he should play energy or not, or save his cards. Because now it's slowly starting to get, uh, it's getting pretty grim for him, and I think he's slowly realizing, oh crap, I have no cards, what am I supposed to do? He's deciding on his energy, because I'm sure those three cards are really important. Alex throws Bulma down, and then he taps six for the Evolve on the Goku. And obviously with yellow, which honestly, Crusher Ball is, I think, one of the best cards in the game. I Crusher Ball his Goku, because... Uh, you can only Goku's effect only comes when he attacks. So before he gets to attack, I rest him, and Crusher Ball stops so many things. That's what I think it makes yellow up there. I think still blue is probably the best color, but I think yellow is right next to it um, because basically because of Crusher Ball. Crusher Ball is so good right now. Um, yep. So he likes to pass after that. It's my turn, and as you can see in my hand, I have a Beerus as a kill card. Um, which I love is like Beerus, Mecha Frieza, they can handle almost anything on their opponent on my opponent's board. And yeah, it just works out perfectly. So next we have I think I'm just gonna play the Beerus it looks like. Kills Goku. Actually here's another thing I should have done that I didn't do. I should have just attacked his Goku with my Frieza to draw the card, but I completely forgot and um I didn't bother. But then I do have a Goldo in my hand. So I was able to exhaust that and just attack it with my Frieza and draw a card. So yeah, you always want a target to attack. Obviously I got lucky there with, I had a gold on my hand, I think, so I forgot, forgot about that. And, uh, but you don't want to attack his leader because you don't want to give him any more cards. Cards you don't need to, mainly because I'm trying to wait for my seven drop beers to win the game. So now this exact scenario that's playing out right now is exactly what I did to Brawly, Champa, Chomp is a little bit more difficult because they can get some cards when they throw out a 15k attacker to attack, but eventually that, that stuff runs out because I'll, I'll keep killing their cards, I'll keep stopping their cards, and eventually they won't be able to do that forever and you'll just grind them out. Kaba is not enough to awaken them, and same with uh, Kaba. Yeah, Kaba will never be enough to awaken them, and same with uh, Furious El Vegeta, especially if you keep them at 8. So now I didn't have the Crusher Ball in my hand, but I did have Cold Ball Less, which negates his abilities, and yeah. So he isn't able to do too much to me. See, I can just sit back and relax. Obviously, I, at this point, if he starts drawing more cards, I'm going to start running out of Crusher Balls. But hopefully, I find my Beerus in time to do it. But next turn again, I can play Beerus, kill his Beerus, and just pass turn and keep going. So next, I draw a counter. Yeah, so right now, I'm, I'm really just trying to mull for this uh, Beerus to win the game. Because as you can see, he has zero cards in hand. There's not much he can do. I'd like to play, I'm pretty sure I play this as my energy, just because I don't think I'm ever going to need it. One, because I don't think he'll, I'll be able to let him get me under five, under, under to four, so I can use it. And yeah. So Beerus to his Beerus. And then I'm pretty sure I just passed, actually no, I think I like to attack here, because 
giving him one card at this point I felt was like kind of whatever, mainly because I'm just trying to find that Beerus. Again, no luck with the Beerus. And then I pass turn, I believe, as I do. Oh no. Oh yeah, sorry, I guess I guess I play Sorbear. So so do I? I do not, I pass. <laughs> so I pass the turn and he gets a second card. Man, there's not much he can do here. Can he, he can play one of his energy. At this point, I think he, just, he should probably stop playing energy. I don't think he needs any more energy. He should just save his cards. If he knew what I was doing to him, he should just save his cards. But he did. So which he did actually, so he passed his turn. I draw an objection. I just figured I'd just throw it down because I don't need it anymore. Because at this point, I probably won't play energy anymore either unless I pull either objection or results because I don't need those cards. Whereas any other card I can probably use. Again, I swing at his leader. Hopefully finding that card. Again, to no avail. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I just passed turn here. It goes. See now, if he had results of training, this game would be completely different. I would have to play it completely different. And yeah, so that's why result of training, honestly, you guys, is a must. If you're ever, if you're playing a mono color deck, you're probably gonna have a hard time. If you're playing any deck that involves blue, you either need results in your main or at least in your side deck. Um, yeah, because honestly, it feels uh, cer certain matchups. If your opponent's playing results and you're not, you're probably gonna have a bad time. So yeah, this one I play. Uh, and this is another thing too. Uh, actually, this is the this is the promo card, which is so good. This is the only card where you ever get to see your opponent's hand, and it gives you so much information. See, I see he has two Sensu beans and a counter, which actually comes into play later. Um, I have pretty bad memory, honestly, sometimes, like short-term memory at least, but I do know, so I do remember later, but so those are his three cards, and then I attack that boost tech Piccolo just to draw my card, and I pass turn, waiting for that Beers. But he is slowly accumulating cards, so that is kind of worrisome, but hopefully we can uh, knock that out of his hand soon. See, so yeah, at this point, there's not much he can do, um, except for maybe save cards and, you know, hopefully I don't beers him and wait to be a, for me to either deck out or just force awaken him and start the game. But yeah, he plays his beers. I appreciate. He... Oh, so he does swing here. So now normally I probably wouldn't bother taking this, but I was afraid. Damn, maybe one of my beers is is right here. So I was like, you know, what, screw it. I'll take two. Mainly because I can just, I can stop most of his attacks anyways. I'm not too scared of him being able to to push for the win at any point. Especially with only one card and having so many cards. So I took the damage just because I'm trying to find that Beerus. And again, obviously to no avail. So normally this game would have been over 3-4 turns ago. Which is what I did to a lot of the, the other players. But I just unlucky and unfortunate to not draw into Beerus yet. This one, oh, this is another misplay I remember doing. So I swung into his Beerus, I drew a card. Now, before I done this, did this, I should have just played my Sober like I'm about to do now. Or sorry, that I do after this. Because then, because I just throw a Sensu Bean at it. Which, you know, obviously you want to maximize your, re your resources. Because if I played Sober first, I can at least untap that energy, have a Sober out there, and have all my energy untapped still. Uh, and then, but at this point it didn't really matter. So he did elect to save it, and I did have things I could have done to. Hold on. So I played so bear. I can't remember what's on my hand here. I'm pretty sure I could have just swung and killed it with my beers and stuff like that, but I said screw it because I kind of, in my head, I was thinking, maybe I'll just let him attack attack me one more time with it, just so I can pull some more cards. But then I think, ah, screw it. Let's just leave it alone. But I probably could have done something there actually, because I probably could have swung at his Beerus with my Beerus, make him probably pitch some more cards, or at least ca try to counter the attack. So I know, so right now he should have what, another Sensu Bean and another counter. Um, and that card he just drew, which I will now Crusher Ball. So I'm not actually sure, I don't remember why I didn't try to beat him there. But I probably could have. 
Depending how you defending if he def try to defend his uh to be his beers. So yeah, maybe I, I could I probably could have ended it that turn, but I don't know why I didn't. So it comes to this one. Yeah, I question all that. He swings again. This time I say I have all the counters in my hand. I figure I'm, gonna, I'm probably gonna end him next turn anyways. So I just counter. Pretty sure he likes the pass turn here. And yep, and I draw. I think I play another energy so I know I have enough energy. I think I play my counter here because I know I'm not gonna go past this turn. Um, see, I was about to play this Mecha Frieza, but then I remembered. Wait a second. He had Sensu Bean and Whis's Coercion in his hand that one time I saw it. He had two Sensu Beans and the Whis Coercion, which and then the Boost Attack Piccolo. So then I was like, and I took the Boost Attack Piccolo, and he only had three more cards after that. Which then he then played uh, that Goku, and he played a Sensu Bean. So now he shouldn't shouldn't have any energy, like those guys in his hand. Thus, I actually didn't need to do that because I would have whiffed on it and not gotten anything. So I decided to hopefully just swing into his guys and hopefully he decides to try to protect them. I swing to Goku, draw a card. He I believe he lets it die here. And this isn't so I think he's about to make the mistake here. Although there's not much you can do anyways after this. Pretty sure I attack his Beerus and he elects to try to defend it with, I believe, his Sensu Bean. Which, once he'd done that, I knew I had game, which is the reason he probably shouldn't have done that. But I guess he wasn't expecting it quite yet. So that's another big thing, knowing what your opponent can have at all times. And in this case, I had the Beerus for the win. Because he has one card in his hand, I swing, it doesn't matter how much life he has. Um, if he can't discard two cards from his hand, he loses all of his energy, all of his battle cards, and it's almost impossible to come back from that. Sure, he'll draw three cards, sure he'll be able to awaken, but then now he's starting at one card, sorry, one energy, which at this point is almost impossible to, to defend against. So now he's just coming to the realization, he's just reading my cards to make sure it's on the up and up, which is perfectly fine. It's a friendly game still. Uh, everybody at my locals has been super friendly. Even me, him, him and I after this, we talked about his deck, and uh, he, he asked me some suggestions of, like, do I need results training? And I said, most definitely. And the community I've run into so far, at least where, I, where, I from, where I'm from, is really good. He's a really nice guy. He actually won a tournament uh, with his Beerus deck, I'm pretty sure, recently. Um, so he was, he was a good player. Still, obviously, learning the game. There's a bunch of us still learning the game. Um, but yeah, it's just going through the deck. And that was the tournament. Um, well, that was round two. I ended up playing um, a Vegeta deck, which was, was actually my Vegeta deck. I lended it to uh, I lended it to my opponent before the tournament, so he could play my green, blue Vegeta, and he ended up making it to the finals against me. And I actually beat him in the finals, but I think made more because he made a misplay. I don't remember exactly how I won, but I did uh, win this tournament, playing up against my own deck at the finals. And yeah, so. That is the tournament, uh, the, the game. As you can see there, there isn't much you can do without results of training, you guys. I'm telling you, if you run in blue, you either need this in your main or your side. It's probably the most key card, honestly, of all the cards in this set. Um, obviously, Vegeta doesn't need to play it. Ginyu doesn't need to play it. But if you can't Force Awaken and you're relying on Kaba or Furious Yellow Vegeta to, to help you Force Awaken at 5, you were probably in for a bad time because results of training is so so good especially in my current deck as you saw the interaction i did with the uh being able to use my ability on both sides and yeah it worked out perfectly uh, i really like frieza i actually really i think yellow honestly i think yellow is probably if yellow's cards weren't so specific to yellow in some of them they would have one of the best it would probably be the best uh, the color, but for now I believe blue blue is just so splashable in in every other deck that blue is probably just the number one uh, Color right now just because yeah, it has really a bunch of really good cards and yeah I hope you guys learned something from this. I hope you guys enjoyed this if you guys want to see more of these type of videos Let me know because I know it's it's one thing to shoot my deck out there, but if you guys don't know how to play it uh, It can be hard sometimes because that's what I actually really like about this game a lot of the decks aren't you can't just autopilot a lot of the decks even Vegeta you can't autopilot Vegeta no matter how good he is uh, Vegeta players will lose if they don't know how to pilot him correctly um, that's why I really like this game because it is a lot of skill based um, you can't just pick up any random deck and that's better than somebody else's deck and beat them you just need to be you actually need to be really good at the game 
uh, knowledge about the game and it'll help you win and I believe that's how I've been winning a lot of my tournaments just because I do play this game a lot so I do see a lot of different scenarios I do see a bunch of different decks I'm rarely surprised by things I still make uh, misplays for sure everybody's gonna make misplays here and there it's hard to play perfect um, but yeah hope you guys enjoyed this uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and yeah see you guys next time